Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. This is the four hour chart of silver. And uh, you can see here, I put this arrow down here. These are the spike lows. Uh, those are the points where you want to try to buy if you can manage to do so in the time allotted. So you can see with the four hour chart here, there was there were a number of hours that you could have done that uh, more here than there were back over here. Nevertheless, uh, what's interesting about these, as I pointed out before, both of these time periods, this spike low here and this spike low here, are periods when the U.S. Mint stopped selling the Silver Eagles. So, yeah, uh, it's, it's got a low price, but you can't buy it. Just absolutely crazy. But you can buy the other stuff. And, of course, you know we look at the Lunar Series, and there's still some great deals. There's still uh, the two ounces at Gainesville. I didn't take them all. And they're still around 40. Well, they've come up. They were 40. They At first, they were 38. And then they went to 40. I think they're now 42. So I think maybe they caught on to that mispricing. Hopefully, it was one of the members that snapped up those half ounce because they had a 1,000 and then they were gone. And again, the reason why I did it was because I could put it on credit card and the... Uh, increase in the price for the credit card wasn't that much. In fact, it's the same amount that I get in points. So that's the reason why I did it. If they renege, then I renege. I just charge it back. So hopefully someone can get the rest of those. I think that the two ounce goats are the best deal out there. There are also some half ounce goats now, I believe around 1180 now. I think it's Provident or JM Bullion. You'll have to check it. So that's the reaction of silver. Um, to be expected that it's not going to really trade when they're not when they you know don't have the eagles available you're not going to get the prices that's just the way it works now the big story of course is going to be greece uh, that's that's thunder we have storms coming in, in the background and uh, the first thing i want to pull up here is the euro chart now this is completely counterintuitive to everything that anybody would think um, the euro selling off the euro had been rallying on a grexit and then the euro selling off with Greece staying in there. What does that mean? Does that mean that the market views that Greece will weaken the euro? Perhaps that's what that means. Or perhaps it also means that the terms are, are so ridiculous that they're not going to be followed through with. So before I examine that story on Greece... I want to uh, make a little recantation here on my opinion of Verifakis because now that he's come out and given an interview, if you remember, what happened was that he went to Brussels and they had the vote. And then as soon as he came back, he resigned. And Mike Maloney pointed out that, you know, he, he said that uh, he promised the banks would reopen. And we're going to read the news on the banks too. But and then, you no, know, Mike Maloney pointed out that, oh, right after he came back, he resigned. Well, this is the first interview that he actually has given since that time. And it's very interesting. I have changed my opinion on this man. He's saying that this is a new Versailles Treaty. And you know what the Versailles Treaty was, of course. That was the treaty after World War One in Germany, which had the incredible reparations that were required that basically impoverished Germany and uh, created the conditions for the rise of Adolf Hitler. So let's listen to this interview. It's very interesting. And this is him talking about when he got back right after the vote had been taken, uh, the, the uh, no vote on accepting the Troika's deal. I jumped more than I was pushed on the night of the referendum, Philip. I entered the prime ministerial office uh, elated. I was uh, traveling on a beautiful cloud pushed by the uh, beautiful winds of the public's enthusiasm for uh, the victory of Greek democracy during that referendum. The moment I entered the prime ministerial office, uh, I sensed immediately a certain sense of resignation, uh, a negatively charged atmosphere. And um, I was confronted with uh, an air of defeat, which was completely at odds with what was happening outside. And at that point, I had to put it to the Prime Minister, 
if you want to use the buzz of democracy outside the gates of this splendid building, you can kind count on me. But if, on the other hand, uh, you feel you cannot manage, you cannot uh, handle that, that big, that this majestic no to a rather irrational proposition from our European partners, uh, then I'm, I'm going to simply steal into the night. So there it is, the interview with Verifacus. I take back what I said. I, I think this guy, if you look into his past, he's actually was involved as a consultant in the cryptocurrencies. I think that he was trying to tell the Troika that you, we have to have debt relief. And they wanted somebody else. And I think that the rumor is people are saying that Cyprus was expecting a yes vote and then he'd have clearance to go ahead and sign on to the latest deal. But uh, it's probably much more likely that he was threatened or, you know, he didn't have a choice. I don't know. But I said from the very beginning, if you remember, from the very beginning when this group was elected, that, and remember, they are a communist party and they were elected on an anti-austerity ballot. So it was fairly predictable that they weren't the party of saying, well, let's drop out and go it alone. They were the party of saying, we, we want a better deal. We want to we want to keep going. We need we need more money. You need to loan us more money. I mean, that's pretty much what they were elected on, even though, you know, the Greeks said, well, we don't want any more austerity. Well, you're going to have to have austerity. And we can see here now, looking at the latest Zero Hedge article, that there is going to be a lot more austerity. Greece just lost control of its banks and why deposit haircuts are imminent. Now, the earlier stories talked about how they were selling off Greek islands. They have this interesting arrangement where they're going to place $50 billion. It's almost like a um, escrow account. They're going to put roughly $50 billion in this type of escrow account that's controlled by Brussels, apparently. And it's going to have... Uh, the value of Greek assets. They're going to privatize, sell off uh, government industries. So this is this is the sort of IMF pattern that we've seen in the past applied to the third world countries. Uh, so um, Verifacus has definitely gone up, in my opinion. Uh, Cyprus has gone down. It's going to be very interesting to see. I don't know how it could go down lower, but you know it's very clear that he sold out. His country, maybe he didn't have a choice. Um, it, it's going to be very interesting over there. But let's read this. Greece just lost control of its banks and why deposit haircuts are imminent. Yes, Greek banks may have been insolvent, something that was clear since the first bailout of 2010, but at least the Greek state had control over them. As such, it could have mandated mergers, recapitalizations, liquidity injections, even depositor bail-ins. Perhaps the harshest lesson for the ordinary Greek population as a result of this latest crisis is that deposits are not cash in the bank, but liabilities of insolvent financial organizations. Starting on Wednesday, that will no longer be the case, because while Greek banks will maintain their capital controls for months and withdrawals will be limited to 60 euro for or less for months, the ECB is well aware that any boost to the ELA will result in a prompt, prompt surge in deposit outflows until the new ELA ceiling is reached and so on ad, ad infinitum. The one key change on Wednesday when the Cyprus government, whose coalition no longer has a majority in the parliament, will have to rely on opposition votes, votes through the humiliating Greek pre-deal to unlock negotiations for the promised 86 billion euros in bailouts, which will be used almost entirely to repay the Troika, is that it will hand over the keys of Greek banks to the ECB. Here is Reuters with this little known fact. One of the preconditions imposed on Greece for a deal is that it signs into law European rules that will put the Eurozone authorities at the ECB and in Brussels rather than Athens in charge of identifying and closing or breaking up sick banks. This in turn could lead to a shakeup of the sector that could see some banks close with losses pushed onto bondholders and possibly even large depositors. In such circumstances, there would be little that Athens could do to prevent this one European official had told Reuters that the number of big banks in the country could be reduced from four national bank 
Piraeus, Eurobank, and Alpha to as little as two. Keep in mind the primary leverage the ECB had over the Greek government was the hint that if only Greece agrees to the terms, the European Central Bank just might maybe nice enough to ease ELA haircuts and eventually boost the ELA ceiling to allow the phasing out of capital controls and permit Greeks access to their savings. This will not happen. Unfortunately, the moment the Greek government votes through the deal required by summit document SN, etc., the Greek government will not only hand over sovereignty of to fifty billion dollars, fifty billion euros of Greece choicest assets to some escrowed fund controlled by Belgium and designed to liquidate Greek assets to repay the Troika. It will also give up control of all the nation's 120 billion euro or so leftover personal or corporate deposits, also known as unsecured liabilities. And since the banks are undercapitalized by at least euro 25 billion and realistically over 60 billion euros, if one takes into account NPLS, which is at 50%, are very over very optimistic estimate for a country in depression for six consecutive years. The first decision the ECB will do once it realizes the starry, sorry state of financial affairs in Greece is to do precisely what the government could have done but did not have the guts to do when it still had control overnight. It will about 50%. Uh, it will give about a 50% haircut to Greek depositors. In other words, Greece is about to hand over the keys to the only thing that is forcing it to hand over the keys. Unfortunately for Greece, there will be absolutely nothing its government can do to avoid this because on Wednesday the Greek government will vote to hand over its sovereignty to Europe for sadly absolutely nothing in return. Our only question, once we first ask in April, is whether as part of the deal. The 112.5 tons of official Greek gold will also be handed over to Frankfurt, Berlin, or Brussels. Recall back in 2012, quote, Ms. Katzeli, an economist who was labor minister in the government of George Papandreou until she left in the cabinet reshuffle last June, was also upset that Greece's lenders will have the right to seize the gold reserves in the Bank of Greece under the terms of the New Deal. Since this bailout has the most draconian terms yet, we wonder just what the fake of the Greek fate of the Greek gold will be. So incredible. That's what's going on. That's the pattern. Now this is extend and pretend. The reason why this had to happen, this is a lot of people have mentioned, Mike Maloney, Peter Schiff, many, many others have pointed out that if Greece defaults on their debt and it's officially called a default and officially ruled a default, as Bill Holter has pointed out, then that causes a triggering of a tremendous amount of these insurance contracts, derivative insurance contracts, CDSs, CDOs. These are basically bets, side bets, whether or not Greece will default or not. So that would trigger a cascading uh, avalanche or a domino effect in derivatives. And that's why the Troika, and I personally believe the Federal Reserve actually is behind all of this because as others have pointed out the the US is actually the US banks are actually on the hook for a large amount of the Greek debt as well uh, that is why they are extending and pretending and preventing this thing from spreading so that's the Greek situation uh, that's really a tragedy now I wanted to take a look at this uh, first of all well I wanted to take a look at the uh, Bitcoin Chinese Yuan uh, price and the reason I'm showing you this is because this is actually the only real market anymore. Now you can see it's pretty obvious on this chart. This point right here, this crash, this is the news coming out. Bitcoin had made new highs. It was up in the 300, over 300, well over 300 in the, uh, let's go over to Bitstamp. Uh, so you can see that Bitcoin hit 317 on the speculation that there would be a Grexit. And then when we had the news that this deal was cut, we've got this crash in Bitcoin. And so this it's definitely the case that Bitcoin is the only real market that we have anymore. The rest of these markets are, are completely fake. So I wanted to take you to briefly the junk silver prices because what's going on is that uh, the the junk silver is just absolutely blowing out now 
The green here, this is CompareSilverPrices.com, and the, the green is always the best deal. You can see that uh, BGASC, buy gold and silver coins, that's not one that I'm familiar with, but that's the number one here on these 90% bags. You can see the $100 bag, 90% silver, the best price you can get is 20% over spot. So if you look down here, if you look at the Atmex price, okay, this price, $15.39, that comes to twenty twenty one $21.50 an ounce. Uh, if it's a 100-ounce bag, you divide by 71. A 1,000-ounce bag, you divide by 715. There's roughly 715 ounces, give or take, in a 1,000 uh, face, $1,000 face, 90% bag. So we're talking $22, even higher here at the other one. Uh, this one here is almost 20 bucks. So we're talking anywhere from a five to seven dollar premium for junk silver. And I've said before, if you remember, I said before, the uh, I believe that the junk silver is probably the first to go. That that's the stuff that people uh, should stack first, in my opinion. And I think that's true in the opinion of a lot of others. I've heard Bill Holter say that. I've heard Andy Hoffman say that. I've heard uh, Chris Duane say that. I've heard a lot of people say that. So I think that's the case. It seems to be happening. Um, the premium over at eBay, look at that, 43.74%. We're talking 23, nearly 22 to $23 an ounce junk silver. Incredible. So the last thing I'm going to show you is a wallet here. This is a wallet for uh, one of the coins that I have here. You can see I have a balance of 80000 of these philosopher stone, um, it's just something I'm playing with, and it, it's kind of fun. You can see here on the World Coin Index chart, it's not really, uh, you know, real popular coin. You can see it has a market cap of twenty-two thousand dollars, and uh, I have about eighty thousand. You can see there's one point eight million, so I have let's see, a hundred thousand would be. Um, uh, maybe I've got maybe three or four percent of this coin, which I tried to slowly accumulate at low prices. The spreads you always want to buy on the bid, you never want to buy on the ask. Uh, but uh, it's very interesting and uh, it's fun to play with. I just wanted to explain this one to you here because this is this is a coin that's a little bit different in concept, and uh, it's interesting to learn how these things work. Now, if you're familiar with Bitcoin and Litecoin and the proof of work coins, basically they use miners, have a tremendous amount of electricity and mining and all this stuff going on here. These coins are called proof of stake. And uh, it, I like the wallet, it's kind of neat. You can see here, you get a chart here of the stake weight. And uh, you can see here, in these recent transactions that I have here, you can see that it sent me, uh, let's see, there's, 327, 208, 234. It came to about a thousand coins that it sent me, and these were actually staked coins. If you go down here to the bottom and click on this, you can see it says staking. Your weight is 100, network weight is uh, 60, 679, 100,000. You have a 50% chance of producing a stake within 157 days. So this is this is a new idea that I really like. It's a cryptocurrency where it's proof of stake. In other words, the more you have of it, the more you get of it. And uh, you have an incentive to keep your wallet open, to keep the network alive, because if you're staking, that means you're mining. It's kind of the equivalent. So that's just really a neat thing that I like about this. I have a couple, I don't know what it's worth, maybe two or three Bitcoins, something I've been accumulating just for fun. And I've taken my profits from some of the others to put them in here. So. It's interesting for people who are trying to explore. It's not that hard to do. Uh, if you if you do download one of these wallets, uh, give me a shout out on the member site, and I'll send you some coins. Um, but it's just it's kind of neat. It's something you want to learn. Um, it's not that hard. You're going to want to take your wallet once you have it, download it. You're going to want to go ahead and back up the wallet, and you're also going to want to encrypt the wallet. Make sure that it has an encrypted password. And then you're going to have to unlock it if you want it to stake. Uh, so th 
this is, uh, yeah, it is staking. I just brought down the last uh, thousands that I had at Cripsy, so I'm not sure if it would be staking. But yeah, you're going to do that. If anybody wants any help, just uh, if you want to do that, just let me know. So that's uh, that's the latest thing I'm doing with the cryptocurrencies. But back to the markets. It's very, very strange that the euro is selling off on this news. It's also very, very strange that the yen is uh, absolutely collapsing on this news. This is the US dollar, Japanese yen. And you can see we've covered this many times. It's been absolutely killed for, for literally years. They've been killing the yen. Now they're killing it again based on this news. So the only news that the only markets that really interpret the news correctly are the cryptocurrencies. Um, the rest of the markets are insane. Of course, we had that Dow rally today, and that was to be expected because it was extend and pretend they're keeping the assist the system alive longer. I guess that's good for stackers because the Dow was about to roll over, and uh, that could have been the end of the system. We are looking at very very extremely tight prices on junk silver. Of course, we have the Eagles not being sold. So it's hard to get silver at a good price. Uh, there's still some of the Lunars available. We're gonna be waiting for the monkey and that's gonna be very interesting to see what price they decide to roll that coin out at on the secondary market. We're gonna be watching that very closely and we'll talk to you next time.